I'm going to look at something a little bit different today. We've got this little USB power bank thing here which has just arrived. My wife decided to buy a couple of these. We're going to pull this thing apart and have a look at it. Because, you know, why not? So it's the Model A5. No manufacturer on it. But it's supposed to be a 2600 milliamp hours. We'll see about that. Made in China, of course. All the best stuff's made in China. Yeah, not much to see on the back. But it says output 1000 milliamps max. Output DC 5.3 volts. Hmm. Don't forget to click like and subscribe as well as your first time here. Let's open it up. So, we've got a little USB charging cable. And there's no switch, it's just plug in and go. So, I've got a USB A port and a USB micro. That plugs in the micro, and you plug it into a port to charge it up. And obviously, then you use this port here to discharge it. Use metal spudger, because what could possibly go wrong on something which has got a lithium cell on it? Oh, excellent. It's a replaceable cell. Let's pop it out. Absolutely no markings. And it doesn't weigh very much. It weighs very little, in fact. Let me go and weigh it. This cell that comes in it is 28 grams. This is a cell I've got laying around, which is out of an old laptop battery pack. This weighs 43 grams, which I think is more typical. Big difference in weight, which means there's probably not much in it. So I think the claim of 2,600 milliamp hours is not going to be real because there's no way a cell which weighs this little will have that much capacity. Hmm. 2.4 volts, yep that's fully discharged. So we can fully charge this and see what goes into it. I'll tell you exactly what its actual capacity is. I reckon it's going to be about a quarter of what it says it is. Looks like it just slots in. Let's just try putting it out and see what, how we go. Let's lever this up. There we go. Look at that. Oh, I need to get the other end out as well. So we've got two LEDs there, which would probably be a, like a charging and on state or something. On the back here you've got an inductor. So it's probably just a charge controller. I don't know, it could be a dedicated chip for doing these jobs. Well, mind you, right here it says YD1855 1.2. Is that the board number? And this is about as close as I can get. Let me try and get a bit more. Right, and you can just see the chip number there, get the light on it right. There we are. MP3401A. We should look that up. Right, so I found this diagram online. It's like a, obviously out of a data sheet or something, maybe a Chinese data sheet. I can actually find a data sheet very easily. I mean, there were stuff there, but I didn't get dig into them. Because I found this one, I thought, this would be right. So this is very much like the circuit we have, except they've cheapened it further. The board we've got here, it has these LEDs. They are there. It only has one of these capacitors, so that's not there. Over here, we've got some input filtering across the DC supply for the charge circuit coming in. Those also are not there. This capacitor is present. The inductor and obviously the battery are present. This filtering here, which is on this inductor circuit here, this is obviously power supply filtering from the inductor, from the pulses. Um, that also isn't there. They're not populated. So these aren't populated. That's not populated. Otherwise, it's the same. So I don't need to sit down and draw out a circuit diagram for this thing because there already is one, apart from a few bits. It's basically textbook. I mean, you've got one R5 on here. Probably can't see that because of lighting and stuff, but one R5 on there, which is 1.5 microhenry, as per the data sheet. You see, it's textbook out of the data sheet, except they cheapened it by removing filtering. They thought they didn't need filtering on it. Anyway, I'm going to go and test this battery. So stick around, we'll find out what actual capacity it really is. So you've got this charger here, like a general purpose charger, it does all sorts of batteries and things like that. You control charge cards and maybe. I showed this in the mailbag some time ago, I've had it for quite a while now. Let's drop that in there. 2.4 volts, it recognised that. It's recognised lithium ion. Now it's going to sit there charging it. I'm going to do just half an amp because it is really discharged, so I'm just going to do a really gentle current on it. And I'll come back later on once it's done. I thought I'd show you this for a walk away. So, so far I've done 31 milliamp hours, and the internal resistance is 250 milliohms. Pretty sure other batteries are normally a lot better than that. So, if I get this one here, which is an old laptop battery, right, I'll chuck this in another port, and I'll see what this one says. It's been sitting with this for ages, it's probably completely flat. Oh, it's still got 4 volts on it. 92 milliohms. 
This battery's been sitting on my desk for well, six months. Bit of a difference, isn't there? There we go. There's the result of a full charge. 677 milliamp hours. That's 2,000 milliamp hours short of what he claims. And I estimated about a quarter of the size. What's four times 677? There you go. 2708. I was right. It's one quarter of the size it should be. That was a good guess, wasn't it? To charge one with a USB monitoring device, okay? And that came up as exactly 600 milliamp hours charging through 5 volts. So obviously you got a bit of a difference there because of the voltages and what have you. But it may have been, had more charge in it as well, that sort of stuff. So don't forget, a 677 from below minimum voltage, it was 2.6 volts, was it? 2.4 volts, I can't remember now. So that is below 3 volts, shouldn't really, you know, go below 3 volts on these things, but it did. It's probably actually less than 677, so I think these are not very good cells. But then these little power banks, they weren't expensive either, aren't you? I think they're about $5 each or something. When my wife bought them, because she bought them, I said to her, I don't see how they can do them for that, because that's like the cost of a cell. Anyway, that's how they can do it. They give you a really rubbish cell, which is probably half full of sand or something, I don't know. So something I actually have here are some protected cells. I do actually have, I think I bought four of them at a time. I don't know what the capacity is of these ones. I think it was about 2,400 or something. But these are protected cells, so these actually got little circuitry in the end of them. I don't know if you see a lump just there. It's got a little circuit board in here, which means it won't go below 3 volts. It won't overcharge either, so it'll protect the, the units. If this will fit in the casing, which it may or may not, then I might actually install these instead. I've only got a couple of them there. Still going to be four times better than this because this is rubbish. And at least it'll give a decent runtime. You know, 600 milliamp hours. It's going to do very little, isn't it? You know, half an amp for an hour, and it's flat. Whereas these can at least run half an amp for four hours, maybe five. That's the way I go. So let's just replace all this, put it back in. Then we'll see if we can get this other cell in there. It may not fit because it is slightly longer. But we'll see how lucky we are. I don't know. Not knocking my chances. It's also slightly thicker. It seems that is not going to go. That's a shame. I can't use a protected cell. Damn. I've always got these cells here. These are some proper Samsung cells. 3500 milliamp hours. Let's see if these will fit. It looks like it might. And get the spring compressed down. Yep, just goes. There we go. It's in. I wonder if it works. All right, so I've got these little USB load testers here. Obviously I do have a DC electronic load as well, but um, I want to use this, because it's easy to see on camera. 5 volt 1 amp. Stop. Stop is also start. So it's doing 1 amp. Where's the cutout? Oh look at that. 1.2 amps or so. It's like 1.1 amp. It's where it starts to dip. Yeah, there you go. 1.1. Just over 1.1 amps is the maximum. But we can do one amper, right? That's quite good. And if you wind it down to say half an amp, what do we get? Yeah, it's still about the same. So it's actually doing okay up to one amp, as you'd expect, because it is a proper IC for doing this. Seems fine. That's what I'd expect. Does alright, doesn't it? Just needs a bit of batteries in it. Now, what I can actually see here, you can just see that little blue light in there. Can you see that? Get the lighting off it. Obviously, when it's enabled, you've got the blue light. So let's unplug this. There you go, blue light's gone off. Oh, that went off for a second then. It's still putting power out, but then the blue light's gone off. Now it's back on again. Maybe it's got like a sleep or low power output or something. Anyway. Better than that's got a decent battery in it. So if you like that, don't forget to click like and subscribe and click the bell icon if you're not already subscribed to the channel. And um, I thought I'd just do something a bit different for a change. Clive-esque, as it were. There's plenty of stuff here to watch, which is something I think you should watch. There's place over here that YouTube thinks you should watch. There's a subscribe link here. If you haven't already done that, please do it. And over here is a Patreon support link if you want to help support the channel. Tell me to buy things to do mailbags and things like repairs and stuff like that. They obviously do content. So if you want to help support the channel, Patreon's over there. Bye.